Today, I'm diving into another Proxmox home server build in 2025, and I'm calling this option two. This is a slight variation of my previous home lab server setup that I featured a few weeks back that was built on top of the Minis Forum BD795M. However, this build features the Minis Forum BD795I SE Mini ITX motherboard, and like the last build, has the Ryzen 9 7945HX CPU with 16 cores and 32 threads. If you're thinking about building a powerful, compact server for virtualization, running Proxmox, even possibly running VMware ESXi or other hypervisors, this video is for you. So let's get started. For this build, I wanted a small but powerful home lab server with high performance networking, plenty of RAM, and fast storage for VMs and containers. Let's break down the key components for this build as they are similar to my last build, but slightly different. This build is centered around the Minis Forum BD795i SE motherboard. This is a mini ITX motherboard with a PCIe Gen 5 X16 slot and two M.2 NVMe slots. Unlike the BD795M from my first build, this board does not have SATA ports, which forced me to think about things a little bit differently as far as loading the operating system. So for at least my first install of Proxmox, I'm simply booting from an NVMe drive. This little board though sports a lot of power, even though it's a fairly plain Jane board without a lot of bells and whistles. Let's take a closer look at some of those specs. The form factor and build is a mini ITX size motherboard. When you compare that to the BD795M motherboard, that is a micro ATX motherboard. So the BD795i is even smaller and it makes it ideal for compact cases if you choose one of those for this build. It has a metal reinforced PCIe slot and that ensures that any expansion cards like GPUs or various network adapters are going to be stable seated into the motherboard. The processor is a Ryzen 9 7945HX processor that sports 16 cores, 32 threads. It has a base clock speed of 2.5 gigahertz and it can boost up to 5.4 gigahertz. The TDP values are from 55 watts to 75 watts, which is adjustable, but lower than the desktop Ryzen 9 chips. This is a five nanometer chip. Zen 4 has 80 megs of cache, which is a 64 meg L3 and 16 meg L2 cache combination. Now, why is this combination great for virtualization? Well, it supports a high number of VMs due to the core and thread count. It has efficient power usage compared to the desktop Ryzen chips, and Minisform even calls it a mobile on desktop combination. It has great single threaded performance, which benefits workloads like Docker containers, Kubernetes clusters. It supports PCIe pass-through and Proxmox for hardware acceleration. And it also has memory support for 128 gigs of DDR5 memory. Now that is my specs since I have tested the new Crucial kit. However, it supports 96 gigs officially from Minis Forum. There is no official ECC support, but unbuffered ECC may work, but I have not tested that. It has the compact laptop style memory, the SODIMM chips that we are used to with mini PCs. Storage options, Again, there are no SATA ports. It lacks those native SATA ports, which is a major difference from the VD795M motherboard. Here's what it offers instead though, which I think makes it a great motherboard when you're thinking about a home lab server build. It has two PCIe Gen 5 M.2 slots for NVMe SSDs. So Gen 5 NVMe possibilities here. No onboard SATA, so it requires an M.2 to SATA adapter if you want to use SATA storage. There are plenty of those on Amazon you can find. It's ideal for NVMe-based hypervisors such as Proxmox, ESXi, Unraid, or many others. Uh, they all basically support NVMe. If you want to load your hypervisor on NVMe or run your virtual machine data store from NVMe storage. Now, as far as expansion and connectivity, it has the PCIe Gen 5 X16 slot, which has more bandwidth capabilities than the Gen 4 PCIe slot on the BD795M. It has multiple USB ports, including USB 4, Type-C connection, 
and also a two and a half gig Realtek Ethernet adapter, which is great for fast networking. Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 uh, via the M.2 wireless module, which is not installed in the motherboard by default. Now the PCIe slot is great for adding things like a 10 gig network controller or 25 gig network controller. You can do GPU pass through with Proxmox or VMware ESXi. So lots of possibilities there. Now what about power efficiency and cooling with this combination? Well this motherboard and CPU is designed for mobile power efficiency with adjustable TDP values to uh, control and configure power draw if you desire to do that. Even though it is a low thermal output, you need more than just passive cooling. So you'll need to bring your own 120 millimeter fan to this motherboard after you buy the motherboard and CPU combination from Mini's Forum. Also, another really awesome thing about this motherboard and CPU combination is that it can do bifurcation on the PCIe slot. And that opens up a lot of possibilities that I will detail in just a bit, such as running multiple NVMe drives on that PCIe slot as well as an add-in card if you have the right configuration of hardware to do that. Now as for the case that I've chosen, I've chosen the RackChoice 2U compact server case. I'm reusing the RackChoice 2U server case as it supports both mini ITX and micro ATX motherboards, has decent airflow and allows mounting extra drives like SATA SSDs and U.2 Intel Optane for cache acceleration in Proxmox or for using things like NVMe memory tiering and VMware ESXi. Now, what about memory and storage? Let's dive a little bit deeper on the details there. One of the biggest upgrades for 2025 is the availability of 128 gigs of SODIMM memory. This means that we now have a really significant amount with this motherboard combination for running virtual machines and containers. And I have tested the crucial 128 gig memory kit in this particular motherboard combination and it works perfectly. Have no issues there. Now since unlike the BD795M, I didn't have SATA port so I couldn't use a just simple SATA drive for my boot drive. Instead, I went up installing Proxmox on a Samsung 990 Pro. So I just for the first installation install Proxmox on the same drive that I'm running VMs from, and I'll probably change that up and start testing things. So whether you're running Proxmox, VMware, Kubernetes cluster, having fast NVMe storage will definitely uh, boost performance. So I, I love the Samsung 990 Evo Pros for that. Now, as for networking and power, I chose the Intel X520 10 gig ethernet adapter. This thing is really cheap on Amazon, and I added the 10 gig PCIe card to complement the two and a half gig port. Now, this allows for high-speed networking. It's perfect for lab setups using iSCSI, NFS, or fast VM migrations. And also, since this is a Realtek adapter, if I decide to install VMware ESXi, this Intel 10 gig card is compatible with VMware vSphere. So that's a added Plus. Now, as for the PSU, I chose the Cooler Master MWE Gold 850 PSU. And for my last build, this has been a rock solid PSU. I've had no issues with it. And I've used Cooler Master PSUs over the years and never had issues with those. So I think this is a, a good PSU. And this is an area where, quite frankly, I don't like to skimp or save money. You can find very, very cheap PSUs, but I've definitely seen stability issues and other weird problems using cheap PSU, so I steer away from those. Also for the 125 millimeter fan, I chose the Arctic P12, and this is a slim 120 millimeter fan that I've attached to the BD795 ISE, and it works just fine in this case, and seems to have great airflow uh, over the installed heatsink, as well as you get some wash over on the NVMe drives, which is a nice benefit. Now this Proxmox home server I think is a perfect balance between efficiency and power for home lab enthusiasts. It has a compact yet powerful CPU combination with the motherboard, 16 cores, 32 threads. I'm using 128 gigs of DDR5 memory. I've got blazing fast NVMe storage with the Samsung 990 Pro, high speed networking with Intel 10 gig adapter, and energy efficient and easy to integrate into a home rack. Really love all the components in this build. And also the bifurcation on the PCIe slot allows you to really experiment with some cool add-in cards as well as maybe adding in additional NVMe drives plus using the PCIe slot. So lots of different combinations there. Now also, let me show you guys a little bit more details on the bifurcation options on this motherboard. 
So I want to show you guys, I'm booted into the BIOS of the Minis Forum BD795i SE motherboard with the Ryzen 9 7945HX processor. And I want to show you where the bifurcation options are in the BIOS setup. So if we navigate to the advanced menu, you're going to navigate down to the AMD PBS setup page. So we're going to click AMD PBS setup, and then you'll notice it's designated as graphics configuration, as arguably many will be using the PCIe port for a GPU or some discrete graphics processing unit. But if we explore this, we can see that we can configure the PCIe slash GFX lanes, actually set the bifurcation of this PCIe slot. Now you have really good options here if we just click the drop down. It's going to come in the X16 configuration, which means that all of the 16 lanes are configured to just operate as a single unit with that PCIe slot. But you can split that up into 8x8, 8x4x4, or 4x4x4x4. And this is the configuration that I have currently set as I'm using an add-in hardware module to actually allow me to run two NVMe drives as well as a 10 gig network controller all from the same PCIe slot. And I'll leave links in the description to those hardware modules in case you're interested in doing that. This is why I love this option, especially for a home server, as many of these mini ITX or mini ATX motherboards, they only have a single PCIe slot and you may be limited on the number of M.2 slots that come by default configured on a motherboard like this. With bifurcation options, you can, with the right hardware add-in modules, as I mentioned just a minute ago, you can split these lanes up and actually run multiple hardware components from that PCIe slot. So this is a really great configuration option that is available on the Minis Forum BD. 795i SE motherboard. Well, what are my final thoughts on this build? Well, I love the options that this build gives for home lab enthusiasts. I think the Minis Forum BD 795i SE motherboard is a great motherboard to be the core of your build. It has that included Ryzen 9 7945 HX processor, 32 threads. So this thing is going to do basically anything you need it to do as far as workloads that you throw at it, whether those are virtual machines or containers. And I love that this motherboard is a micro ITX form factor as it is insanely small and it can fit into very small cases that you might choose. 128 gigs of memory, I think you will not regret making that upgrade and spending your money on the memory, especially if you're gonna be self-hosting and never gonna look back on making that decision at maxing out at 128. So all in all, I think this is a great combination of hardware and modern components that will allow you to have many options. And if you have any questions about your home lab build or the hardware components that I'm using in this build, please do hit me up in the VHT forums. I'm there to answer questions along with many others in the community. And it's just a great place to share ideas, nerd out, and talk about all things home lab as well as many, many other tech topics. Do reach out there if you run into any issues. You just simply want to share your experiences with your home lab adventures. Well, let me know what you think about this build. Are you planning on a home lab upgrade in 2025? What hardware are you looking at using? If you have found this video helpful, please hit that like button, subscribe, and press that notification bell for more home lab content. Please do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next one.